Welcome. In this section, we're going to take a look at focal length and field of view and how these parameters are intertwined with one another. So a fixed focal length lens, also known as a conventional or entocentric lens, is a lens with a fixed angular field of view. And by focusing the lens for different working distances, different sized fields of view can be obtained. So the viewing angle is held constant. So if we were to look at this, we have a set of rays that comes in parallel to the lens and is focused to some point. The distance from the lens to that point is known as our focal length. For purposes of this section, we're going to be assuming that the object distance is much, much greater than the focal length. What this allows us to do is make the paraxial approximation. And for this particular case, it also means that the sensor will be placed at the focal plane because the focal plane and the image plane are in the same place. This only occurs when the object distance is much, much greater than the focal length, so this approximation cannot be made in all cases. If we take another set of rays that comes in parallel, but then is focused to clip the top of the sensor, looking at the angle between the ray passing through the center of the lens hitting the center of the sensor, and the ray passing through the center of the lens hitting the top of the sensor, gives us our half angular field of view. So here is the diagram of what we get by drawing all of these rays. And we can see we have our various parameters that can be taken to form right triangles. Note this image is not drawn to scale since we're still assuming that the object distance is much, much greater than the focal length. Pulling out these triangles, we can now form relationships between the angular field of view over two, or the half angular field of view, the working distance, the field of view, the focal length, and the height of the sensor. So taking a look at these relationships, starting with this left triangle, using trigonometry, we can say that the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite side of the triangle over the adjacent side of the triangle. So the tangent of the half angular field of view is equal to the field of view over two times the working distance. And we could solve this for the angular field of view. Say the angular field of view is two times the inverse tangent of the field of view over two times the working distance. Similarly, we could come up with these same types of relationships for this triangle on the right, uh, which gives us the tangent of the angular field of view over two is equal to the height of the sensor divided by two times the focal length. And solving this for the angular field of view, we can say the angular field of view is equal to two times the inverse tangent of the height of the sensor over two times the focal length. We could also use some rules about similar triangles, which is the proportions of the like parts of the triangles are the same, to say that the field of view over the working distance is the same as the height of the sensor over the focal length. Note that if we know any two of these parameters, we are able to determine the third one, from these sets of equations. This is very common for fundamental parameters of optical systems, where if you know two, they are going to set a third one. We should note that our calculations here with these equations are only approximations. The actual case is a little more complex because lenses have actual thicknesses. Uh, the paraxial approximation is not always 100% correct. In fact, it never is. It is a great place to start designing for a lens. However, the design should be laid out using computer simulation or data taken from lens specification tables uh, in your final calculations. We can also see some of the ways that these parameters are intertwined with one another. Here we have an example of two different lenses with different angular field of views, but using the same sensor. Because they have different angular field of views, but using the same sensor, we know from one of our equations that the angular field of view is equal to two times the arc tangent of the sensor height over two times the focal length. So to maintain the same 
angular field of view and the same height of the sensor, different focal lengths are required. So the larger angular field of view requires a shorter focal length lens for the same sensor, whereas a smaller angular field of view requires a longer focal length lens for the same sensor. So if you have a sensor in mind and an angular field of view in mind, then you'll need to pick the specific lens that will work for these parameters. When using fixed focal length lenses, there are a few different ways you can change the field of view of the system. Often the easiest option is just change the working distance from the lens to the object. Moving the lens further away from the object plane increases the field of view. Note that this keeps the same angular field of view, but the larger working distance with the same angular field of view gives a larger field of view. As we just saw in the previous slide, you can swap out the lens that is being used with one with a different focal length. You can also change the size of the sensor that is being used, as a larger sensor will yield a larger field of view for the same working distance. Another possible way is to change the field of view of a system is to use a varifocal lens or a zoom lens. These types of lenses allow for the adjustment of their focal length uh, by working together with a zoom pair. Uh, varifocal lenses and zoom lenses often have a drawback in terms of size and cost in comparison to fixed focal length lenses and often offer worse performance than a fixed focal length lens, though they have greater flexibility. So we can take a look at some calculations. Uh, for example, let's say we have a system where we desire a working distance of 200 millimeters, and we want a horizontal field of view of 50 millimeters. What angular field of view do we need for the system? Well, we have our equation that the angular field of view is equal to two times the arc tangent the horizontal field of view over two times the working distance. Then we can plug in the numbers and find that a 14.25 degree angular field of view would be the desired angular field of view. Okay, so now we know what angular field of view we need. What can we do to achieve this angular field of view? Well, we can look at what pairs of sensor heights and focal lengths will give us these parameters. So let's say we want to use a 25 millimeter focal length lens and a half inch sensor. We could use these parameters to achieve this field of view. Or we could use a 35 millimeter focal length lens and a 2 3rd inch sensor to achieve approximately this field of view. So there's multiple design options that you could go with to achieve these specified parameters. Some lenses are designed to work with a fixed magnification. Uh, lenses that have fixed magnifications have fixed or limited working distance ranges. While well, using a telecentric or other fixed magnification lens can be more constraining as they don't allow for different fields of view by varying working distances, the calculations for them are very direct. The horizontal field of view is equal to the horizontal, horizontal sensor size divided by the primary magnification. Then since the field of view and sensor are often known, the lens selection process can be simplified by using your primary magnification is equal to your horizontal sensor size over horizontal field of view. So for example, an application using a half inch sensor, which has a horizontal sensor size of 6.4 millimeters and a horizontal field of view of 25 millimeters is desired, we can calculate our primary magnification as 6.4 millimeters over 25 millimeters gives us 0 0.256 times, which is a magnification of one quarter approximately. The parameters of optical systems are often not the same in all directions. There is a different horizontal field of view and vertical field of view, which are related by the aspect ratio. Often you're going to want a sensor that has a similar aspect ratio to the parameters of the optical system. Most sensors are in 4-3 format, so there is a four-thirds relationship between the horizontal and vertical direction. However, 5-4 to four and 1-1 to one are also both quite common. 
Generally, we can relate the vertical and horizontal components as the horizontal field of view is equal to the vertical field of view times the aspect ratio of the system. When choosing a lens, manufacturers provide great data for their off-the-shelf products. These figures here show horizontal field of view versus working distance for four different sensor sizes. So by selecting a sensor size and then finding the horizontal field of view and working distance required on the plot, the appropriate focal length of an imaging lens that will work for your application can be chosen. So for example, let's say we want a two-third inch sensor with a 525 millimeter field of view and a 600 millimeter working distance. I can go to my graph and say, well, the two-third inch sensor is listed on this left axis here. So we'll find the 525 millimeter field of view and the 600 millimeter working distance and look at what focal length lens would be appropriate for this application. Note that none of the lenses match exactly. However, we are able to find two, the 8.5 millimeter focal length and the 12 millimeter focal length that will give us within this range. We're likely to want to choose the one that will give us the slightly larger field of view. So we'll have a little extra field of view that we're not quite using for our object for this working distance. Off the shelf products are often slightly cheaper than buying a custom lens. However, as you start to order in bulk, the pricing point approaches approximately the same. So if you're working on a large project, it may be worth ordering custom components rather than just designing with off-the-shelf lenses. A solid understanding of the relationships between your fundamental optical parameters will help speed along your design process. There's also a number of useful tools online. This here is the Imaging System Parameter Calculator, available at edmundoptics.com in their Knowledge Center. From this drop-down menu, I can choose a sensor size from uh, commonly available sizes. I'm going to go ahead and pick a one quarter inch sensor. It will then give me what the horizontal and vertical sensor sizes are, as well as the diagonal. I'll set a pixel size of five microns. That's within the normal size of a pixel. For the working distance, let's go with 40 millimeters and I desire a horizontal field of view of five millimeters. If I go ahead and hit calculate, I'll get the vertical field of view and the diagonal field of view based on my camera sensor size aspect ratio and my horizontal field of view. Then down here are a number of other useful parameters. I'll need a 25.6 millimeter focal length lens this has a horizontal angular field of view of 7.2 degrees and a primary magnification of 0.64. Note this calculator does use the paraxial approximation. So again, this is only a starting point for design, not your final design. Thank you for watching.